This is a message to all our friends in Poland. It's a very nice opportunity we have in this human form of life. I remember when I was living in Sweden, how the first Swedish, how the first Polish devotee came up to Sweden. He was very attracted by Srila Prabhupada. And how Srila Prabhupada's desire for the spiritual enlightenment of Poland was so strong. He sent some devotees there. He was so happy. When anybody became a devotee behind the Iron Curtain, that was for him like a new hope for this whole part of the world. At that time, nobody imagined that Russia and other previous behind the Iron Curtain country could become the most intensive area of growing Krishna consciousness in the age of Kali Yuga. Nobody would have even thought of it in the wildest dream. But this is the way things go. So much that in Brindavan today, many of the signs are in Russian language because Slavic and Russian devotees have increased so much. So we can see, I was very surprised actually to hear over the years as I was preaching in Bulgaria that there is a Veda in Russia, that there's actually thousands of years old books which are called Veda and who tell the stories of Vishnu and Krishna. What an amazing thing. Then in Bulgaria I found that there's the Veda Slovena. I actually read it. It's full of verses describing Krishna, Govinda, Vishnu, Shiva. It's describing Durga. It's describing using the same names. Some people claim that this must be interpolations to show something like some dependence from India by some falsification. But it doesn't make any sense. You say Bulgaria is actually, as the word says, is the land of the Aryans. The Aryans. <coughs> and all over Europe we have some connections. In Sweden also. There are, there are stories in Sweden which are making us think of teachings of the Vedas. Of course, these things are so old that very few concise com, uh, informations are available, but interestingly enough, <coughs> Orthodox Christianity and Western Christianity have very strongly tried to suppress that information. They wouldn't even let anybody know Hey, why do we all speak a language which comes from Sanskrit? They don't want people to know that. But it's there, everywhere you can find. Even the holy names in Hungarian, God means Ishtan. And Ishtan is Ishtar, that's directly Sanskrit. It means God, the, the supreme worshipable Lord. So how can be so many co coincidences? What is the origin of our culture? What is there? How is it possible that we have scriptures called the Vedas in our old traditions? What has been the connection with India and with the sacred teachings of India? What about reincarnation, the knowledge of the soul? Is that new? Well, it wasn't new to the old Christians. The old Christians, they knew about reincarnation. The Jewish people, they knew about reincarnation in the Kabbalah. They mentioned reincarnation. And there's so everywhere you can go in Egypt, uh, Israel, or the, the other countries. There's so many direct hints that this is all coming from India. And Heliodorus' column was the final architectural, uh, archaeological finding which is a column in Madhya Pradesh where there is 300 years before Christ an ambassador from Greece in India converted into a devotee of Krishna 
offering his obeisances to Lord Vishnu Vasudeva and giving a beautiful metal column to testify to that fact and that column is still there. So all the speculation about the origin of spirituality were simply wiped out when this column was found. So my dear friends in Poland, we are here spreading the oldest culture in the world and at the same time we are trying to recover or to discover the greatest of all approaches towards life, which is the approach of love. You see, this is a prema dharma. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has started this path of love so that we can go and share this with others. This is very wonderful. We can develop a new spirituality by the help of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the Western world. One Polish nun gave trouble to the Krishna movement in the early days. It's a very beautiful story. She accused the devotees of Krishna to worship an immoral god because Krishna, according to the Vedic scriptures, married 16,000 princesses. So, when the court case came, there was a hearing and one of the members of the World Vaishnava Association, Sri Patushta Krishna, went to speak, to testify upon the validity of the Vaishnava religion from the moral and spiritual point of view. When he came in front of the judge and he was sworn in, to say the truth, he requested the judge, may I ask this nun who was sitting there and who had been the friend of some parents whose child became a Krishna devotee and they were upset due to their ignorance that this is wonderful. So the judge said, yes, you may ask the nun. So Tushta Krishna asked that nun, dear sister, let me ask you this question. When you became a nun, did they put a ring on your finger? The nun kept silent. She didn't answer. So Tushta Krishna went on. And did they say to you that when you become a nun, that you're actually becoming like a wife of Lord Jesus? Again the nun was silent. So Tushta Krishna turned to the judge and said, this lady, this nun accuses us of worshipping an immoral god because Krishna married 16,000 of the princesses who had taken shelter of him. But she worships Lord Jesus, who is married with every nun on the planet. So a big laughter arose, and the judge quickly said, the case is dismissed. Don't fight with other people who love God. Don't get involved in such silly things. Anybody who tries to serve God and doesn't give trouble to others, He's on the right path. He will be guided to the perfection because this is God's own attempt and intention to guide us all towards perfection. So if anybody is on the planet with the desire to serve God, we feel very joyful about that. We are very grateful about that. And hopefully we can share and help each other to stop the materialistic degradation in this world. What to speak of the devotees of Krishna? One is chanting Hare Krishna and he thinks, oh, it's wonderful. But this other one, he's also chanting Hare Krishna, but he may think something a little bit different. So probably his chanting is not that important, not, not that valuable. Anything like that, silly thoughts, should be transcended once and for all. We are all spirit soul. We are all sons and daughters of the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna. And if we turn to him and we chant his name, all difficulties will be overcome. So let us all encourage spiritual consciousness. This is what I request all of you. And make your life perfect. And make Poland or wherever you go in your lifetime, make it a place of spiritual joy. 
that will be a great satisfaction to Lord Chaitanya and to all the real Christian saints as well. Thank you. Haribol.